Kim, do you ever see a situation where you would support giving taxpayer money to parents, either through vouchers or tax credits, to send their kids to private schools? Well, if I do, I see a situation. I think that I need to be open-minded uh, to that scenario. Uh, I think it's important to um, for our education system to to be open-minded. Um, and me as a candidate, that's that's how I want to approach this. I think it's unfortunate that that some candidates that uh, want to go down and already have their mind made up on that on that question. I don't think that's uh, showing good leadership. I think. Um, we're not the first state um, that would implement a program like that if we did. There's 20 other states that's, that's, that's uh, implemented some form of tax credit or voucher system. And I think it's imperative that we, um, as, as, a, as a citizen group, um, take a look at that and, and see if they are merits that um, tax credits or vouchers um, would better our education system. Because that's really all, all that we're wanting to do is, is to make our education system better. Um, so. You know, I think um, I think that could be a possibility that I would, um, um, and and they may not be. I just I just want to be open-minded to that and and um, and um, and see. I don't buy into the notion that tax credits and vouchers increase competition, though, because um, I think I don't think you can have competition with a regulated industry and an unregulated industry. Um, but if there's correlations that show tax credits and vouchers have has actually uh, decreased dropout rates in other states or, entry, or increased SAT scores, then no matter what characteristic that made that happen, I think we've got to give it give its merits and take a look at it. Sure. Um, there are a couple plans that have been floated to consolidate schools. Um, would you ever support consolidation of Spartanburg County's districts? Uh, that's something that, that's, that's a constituent um, uh, decision. I think I think it's overwhelming, in, in the in in my district that we don't want school consolidation, and for me to go uh, against that would be um, would be not listening to the people that who who I'm wanting to represent. So I wouldn't um, I wouldn't support school consolidation. I don't like school consolidation myself. I think seven school districts um, has had a market-based characteristic. You know, the seven school districts could sort of compete with each other. And I think that's helped bring efficiency um, in our school systems here, in our districts. And um, so that's just my personal opinion about it. But outside of my personal opinion, um, I think it's overwhelmingly that the, the constituents don't want uh, their, the school's consoli districts consolidated. So no, I, I wouldn't support that. Okay. Well, there's also been a lot of talk about the need to control spending in Columbia. Is a spending cap the best way to achieve that? Well, no, not really. I don't think it's the best way. I think getting good conser fiscal conservative leadership would be the, the first and foremost. But, of course, I don't think that that's going to happen. So um, the second way is, is, is looking at spending caps. Um, so I would support spending caps. Um, I don't think that spending caps needs to be tied to cost of uh, the, the inflation index. Cost of cost of living indexes. I think it needs to be tied back to our personal income growth, because there's no correlation between cost of living increases and personal income growth. And since we're paying taxes based off the money that we earn, it needs to be uh, the spending caps need need to track the personal income growth. Okay. What specifically would you do to bring new industries and new jobs to South Carolina? Well. I think it's a structural thing in South Carolina. I think the first thing we need to do is bring accountability back to, to how our legislators spend money. I think the first thing we can do is, is put executive powers back in the governor's hands. Um, and then we need to take a look at our tax structure, do independent audits of, of our agencies, third-party independent audits, not audits from within the system. So that way our legislators can take a look at, hey, what's, you know, what is it that we can cut out um, spending-wise? And I think if we take that approach with spending caps, I think we can lower our taxes, uh, not in form of tax swap, but real tax tax um, cuts. And if we uh, in decrease taxes, um, I think um, if we can make our, our regulatory load on the industry lighter, I think companies will seek us out because this state's a beautiful state. We've got a lot to be proud of in this state. Um, so uh, I, you know, I think I think it's a structural thing. 
with us. And and then I think we it goes back to education too. Education again, we have to make sure that we got good economic workflow. And that's why we need to be open minded with with education in this state because we've got opportunities here. And I think we need to take advantage of those opportunities by being open minded and 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 looking outside the box and 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 looking at innovative innovative ways to to bring industry. And I think structurally. Um, is, 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 is the way to do it. Okay. Um, South Carolinians for Responsible Government has uh, spent several thousand dollars on your campaign. Right. How can the voters of the district be sure that you'll do what is in their best interest rather than what's in the best interest of SCRG? Right. Well, you know, I, that's a good question, and I'm glad you brought that up because I think Everybody who contributes to a candidate has interest in that candidate. I mean, whether it be local people, out of district people, whether it's your next door neighbor. And I'm sure that uh, everybody uh, thinks that uh, their interest is special. Okay? So there's a lot of special interest in, in, in candidate campaign financing. But I think um, to take uh, special interest as, as, um, as the evil person here is, is wrong. I think it comes back to the to the candidate itself. Um, I think it. I think um, the trust level with candidates is, is bad. You know, it, we we felt like we had to pull teeth to get a DUI bill passed, and our immigration bill was watered down. I don't think it ended up being strong strong enough. So I, I think it, um, for the citizens to to, to um, hear the word special interest and 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 have a little bit of trust worthiness associated with that word. I think it's plenty fair, but I think it just comes back to to the candidate, who they are as a person, as a core person. And there's not one piece of melon that's went out that I don't stand behind 100 percent. And and if and if SCRG sends out a melon that that I don't like, I'll be the first to denounce it. Um, I don't I don't I don't um, have um, any other reason to, to go to Columbia outside of truly wanting to represent the voice of the people. Um, and that's, that's what I want to do.